Hi, welcome back to the Cocktail Vlog. I'm Steve the Bartender and today I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm running a giveaway, as you can already tell by the title of this video. So I'm gonna give away three $250 packs, Australian dollars by the way, not US dollars. Uh, I'll send one to someone in Australia, one internationally, and the other one will be reserved for Patreon members. So I've only got 91 Patreon members. So if you are a Patreon subscriber or supporter, you have a very ch high chance of winning a $250 pack. Uh, the reason why I'm, I'm doing this is we have reached over 250,000 subscribers. I think it's about 266 at the moment. And I've been getting a lot of support from other companies. All these people have been sending me lots of bottles, lots of stock, which is amazing. So I pretty much just want to pay it forward. Um, I appreciate all these companies sending me stuff. And I think you guys deserve to, to share in it, I guess. Um, so yeah, I'm going to run through these particular items that I've received from people and just give them a bit of a taste, give them a bit of a nose, uh, and then also utilize them in upcoming videos. So the point of this video as well is to get your feedback um, based on my description of the, the particular spirit. You can let me know what you think would work really well. So first of all, I'm gonna start running through the marionette liqueurs. They sent me this little cute gift pack just before Christmas. Uh, I have used their apricot brandy liqueur, which is this one right here. I'll also link up here to some other videos that is utilizing that ingredient. They do a, a creme de mule, they do amaretto, they do a orange curacao. They, I, I believe they do an orange curacao. Yes, they do. Uh, <laughs> I should know that. Um, but they do a, a range of fruit liqueurs. Uh, in particular, the apricot brandy, they source the brandy from Angoves, which is in South Australia, which is where I'm from, uh, and then Goulburn Valley apricots, and then macerate the apric apricots. Their liqueurs are really, really good. Um, they're relatively new to the, the bar scene in Australia, and they're extremely popular now for good reason, because they taste delicious. So I'm gonna start with the creme de mule, which is made with Tasmanian blackberries. I might pour them all out and get them ready. And I've got an amaretto. The orange curacao. They've got a dry cassis, which is with Tasmanian black currants. No jurors in Victoria. I should know that. I thought it was. Ooh, that looks rich. And the last one that I'm very familiar with, the apricot brandy. Creme de mule. By the way, I'm really bad at describing um, flavors, so this video may end up being a bit of a flop, but we'll see. So this creme de mule is sitting about 20%, and for those that aren't familiar, it's a blackberry liqueur. And it's Smells deep, dark, rich, fruity blackberries. It's quite sweet, but it's not cloyingly sweet. It's, it tastes like fresh blackberries. This is delicious. I'm gonna finish this. Next, the amaretto. So this is sitting at 25%. It smells like the almond skin. It's l less sweet on the nose compared to other amaretto's I've tried. It's kind of almost earthy. Yeah, almost like a, a doughy kind of note to it. Like batter, like a nice sweet batter. 
It's just very different to the amaretto that I'm used to. Tasty. Yeah, tasty, and it would work really well in a drink. Mm. Stay tuned. I will play with this one in the cocktail. Uh, orange curacao. So this one sits at 32%. I'll leave a lot more information in the description below in regards to how their liqueurs are made. Oh, that is zippy. Like fresh orange rind that you've just scratched. But quite boozy. Sitting at 35%, that's, that's quite strong. It's tastes stronger than it smells and stay tuned for my upcoming video which I'm going to test out all the different orange liqueurs side by side these along with the orange curacao I'll be giving feedback and my recommendations on what particular cocktails they are best for next up the dry cassis which is a black currant liqueur this one sits at 20% It's like Ribena in a glass. And it's quite, uh, quite tangy, quite acidic. Have a taste of that. Quite tart. And last of all, apricot brandy, which I've used before, as I've mentioned. Apricots, stone fruit on the nose. You can smell that brandy base as well. It's a very good apricot brandy liqueur. It's used in heaps of old school cocktails. Um, so make sure you check out that playlist. Very good range of liqueurs. I'll leave more details in the description. Headland Distilling Co. were incredibly nice and they sent me four bottles. Uh, they've got an Illawarra plum. I believe Illawarra plums are native to Australia. Cat? She's Googling it. Uh, this particular one is a 20% spirit. So I'm not sure if that's actually a liqueur. It does. I'll find out. Uh, and then I've got a gin, which has for got forage botanicals. It's got a native Australian juniper. Then I've got a Illawarra plum infused gin, and then I've got their vodka as well. So their vodka is made from uh, wheat and barley. And Headlands is a New South Wales distillery. So I'll start off with their vodka. I haven't drunk a lot of vodka straight, so. That tastes great to me. <laughs> I, I don't really know how, how else to describe it. Uh, it's got, it's a wheat and barley base, so it's kind of got this cereal note to it. Incredibly smooth vodka. Uh, this is 40%. It's very smooth vodka. And then next, I'll go straight onto their very unique bottle. This is their gin. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Bubiala. So the gin is crafted exclusively from hand forage, native Australian juniper, a complex array of floral tones combined with a long, luxurious finish. I love that sound. It's a very unique note. And I'm not sure if that uh, unique smell is the Australian native juniper. So it does have some very, very light floral notes to it. I 
it does have good length on the palette. And then I'm really interested to try their Illawarra Plum Spirit and, and their gin. So this is the gin. Yeah, so they've, they've macerated the Illawarra Plum in their gin. Again, I'm assuming it's the, the same gin base. Um, and it's sweetened with bee honey. And it's also got some other authentic Australian bush tucker ingredients. Batch one, bottle 74 of 500. I feel quite privileged to get uh, a bottle from batch one. That's for all of these. It's amazing. Thanks guys. Ooh, you can really smell the honey on the nose with this one. But honey can of, often overpower. Um, it complements the plum quite nicely. The honey flavour is, is very subtle. It's, the aromatics on the nose uh, is more prominent than in the, the gin itself. It does have a really good nose to it. And in this one, the Illawarra Plum, this only sits at 20%. So the plum is hand foraged along the coastline. Uh, In-house fermentation and distillation. Uh, it's barrel aged with the plum skins. And they're saying that they are the first distiller in the world to develop a spirit exclusively from the Illawarra Plum. I love this bottle, that's cool. This one too looks very rich. Almost looks uh, like a Pedro Jimenez sherry. That real intensity. Quite a dry tasting spirit. I think both of these I just kind of visualized or expected uh, more of a sweet note to it. Being only 20%, only I think that's something I'd sip on neat or put it on ice. But, keen to play around with this one in some future videos. So make sure you stay tuned to the very end of the video because then I'll explain how you can enter the uh, $750 giveaway or three $250 giveaways. So next up, I've got Sepultsfield Distillers Gin. Uh, this is their house gin. It sits at 41.5%. And uh, there's a lot of citrus in this, I believe. Um, citrus forward, subtle juniper notes, uh, chamomile, and locally grown lavender. To be honest, I'm not a fan of chamomile. We played around with that uh, with our gin, and I didn't like it, but I do like their gin. Uh, it's quite similar. <laughs> I have tasted it before. Uh, I like the, the, the citrus and the, the floral notes brought by the, the lavender. Lavender can easily overwhelm um, a gin and it kind of gets uh, the, this, this soapy kind of note. But I think there's a good balance of lavender, so I haven't gone too far. Quite citrusy. Um, I should find out, but I think that's more orange driven. And maybe a touch of grapefruit find out in the description below and next up this is probably uh, one of the most unique ones uh, from underground spirits I received this maybe a couple of weeks ago I think this is actually a vodka with caramel and then it's filtered uh, so it's a wheat vodka it's cryo filtered I have no idea what that means <laughs> uh, blah, blah, blah. So that particular filtration method was 
invented by Dr. Toby, the distiller. And I've had a smell of this and <laughs> it is intense, it's sweet, it's, it, it's caramel, like, it smells like a golden gay time ice cream for anyone that knows that particular ice cream. It's impressive the after filtration to have this particular aroma. It's very intense. And that sweetness, that flavor, that intensity, that caramel note comes through massively on the palate as well. And it definitely does not taste like it's 40%. It tastes more like a liqueur. It tastes like it's probably sitting at like 25, 30. This is really, really tasty. I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna utilize it in, in a cocktail, but I, th I think it's uses is somewhat limited, but it is very, very tasty. Have a try. It's literally like you're just drinking caramel. And the last one out of the spirits, this this one wasn't actually uh, sent to me. I, I purchased this one, but it's new to the shelf, so I thought I'd give it a crack. So this is Needle and Pin Spirits. Comes from the Riverland, <laughs> around that area. I really like the uh, unique bottle, it's kind of cool. So this is another local spirit, a local gin. Sits at 40%. And description, fresh and savory gin with a pop of citrus handcrafted using both traditional and riverland grown botanicals. Macerated and pot distilled. So for those who are familiar, the riverland in South Australia uh, is very well known for its citrus. A lot of oranges. Um, what other fruit do they grow down there? Yeah, most of the citrus, but. A lot of mandarins. Ooh. Yeah, I, I, I shouldn't have actually read the description because now I'm just thinking citrus and uh, savory notes, but that's exactly what I get. It's quite a well-rounded gin. It's got good length on the palate. I'm not sure exactly what gives it the, that savory note, but Again, in the description, I'll actually include more information once I find out. It's a tasty gin. So the team at Bundaberg sent me, well, they said they were gonna send me a few samples. They sent me more than a few samples. There's about eight cartons sitting over there uh, full of their different range of soft drinks. Uh, I'm actually quite surprised. I knew they did a lot, but they've got some really unique flavors that I haven't tried before. Um, in particular, the pineapple and coconut. This one really intrigues me. I'm not sure how available their products are in other countries, but I do know their Bundaberg ginger beer. It can be seen everywhere. Um, you guys are probably familiar with it. I can smell it from here. Yeah, yeah. Invert bottle before opening. Sorry, Bundaberg. So this is uh, brewed over two days. Australian owned company. That smells really good. I know I'll easily be able to put the ginger beer to good use in a number of cocktails, but I'm gonna to have to get a little bit creative for the for the, for the others. Um, they, they will make great mixes, but if I'm trying to do something in the cocktail, I'll have to get creative. It tastes like a non-alcoholic pina colada. Dangerous. Dangerous. All right, I was only gonna try one of these, but um, now that I've tried that, that was, that was really tasty. Uh, pink grapefruit, peach, and guava. So I'm going to go for peach. Shut. Invert it. Sorry. It's 
smells and tastes like real peaches. So for the people who've patiently watched all the way through the video or just skipped through to the end, uh, in regards to the giveaway, three people will be uh, winning a bar haul. So there'll be one person in Australia, one international, and one person through Patreon. So a reminder, I've only got 91 people on Patreon, uh, which I'm massively thankful for, but you've got a huge chance of winning this bar haul. Uh, I'll liaise with the winners, find out what they do have in stock, and then just send them a whole bunch of bottles that I'd like to, to send them. So in the description below, I'll have a link to the competition. So make sure you check it out and like this video, share it, and I'll see you soon in another cocktail video. Cheers. Feels, feels weird with a non-alcoholic drink. See you soon.